now we can go ahead and refasten our union together. Since we disconnected this union from the supply here, we're going to want to do a soap test on it to ensure that we have no gas leak whatsoever. So I'm going to spray some soap on the union. And we're going to turn the gas on. And if you have no bubbles, you have no troubles. Seems to be looking good there. Since we know our gas is leak free, we can go ahead and reconnect the wires to the burner itself. Now we're almost ready to test fire the furnace but after Darren had changed the spring what we want to do now is ensure that we're getting the correct grass, gas pressure out of the manifold that is required and as said before this is propane so we do require 11 inches of water column so we are going to attach a digital manometer to the outlet side of the gas valve to ensure that we are achieving the correct pressures we desire so first thing first, behind this black tube, which is also referred to as the manifold, there is a plug in here, which we remove. Like that, put the plug aside up here for now. We're going to take our manometer and disconnect the tube and the fitting. Well, disconnect the tube anyway. And attach the fitting into the hole, the out pressure hole. A little bit easier with the tube off, but it's on there pretty good, so we'll just work around it. So now we have our hose hooked up to our manometer. We're going to turn it on. And we're going to ensure we have at the top there inches dash WG, standing for inches of water column. It's completely zeroed right now. Press zero, see? This whole time we've been performing this change over on the furnace with the power disconnected and locked out obviously for our safety. Yep. Okay. Darren now has the furnace plugged in. Now with the furnace plugged in we are going to flip the service switch energizing the furnace and up here is the T-stat and we are going to give it a call for heat. See venture motors energized. Once this furnace fires, you are going to see a reading on the manometer, which is going to give us our manifold pressure. Now that we have flame, it's important to note you want to make sure your flame sensing rod is in position and it wasn't put out of position when you were doing your conversion. Since the flames are still established, you know that you, it is sensing the flame. And from a visual inspection, it is in position. Now if we are look, to look at our manometer, it is firing at approximately 5.4 inches of water column which is half of what we would like it to. 
So we're, we are going to readjust. Pain conversion kit has been used so many times and the spring has been played with by a lot of students. Um, we can't achieve the exact 11 inches of water column we were looking for. As you can see it's adjusted to the highest that it can go and achieve 10.04. Better to be under fired a little bit on a gas furnace than over fired. So that's all that we can achieve and that's... And then any other circumstance you would have a brand new kit in the spring you wouldn't be changing it back and forth on a on a weekly basis there for educational purposes so as well given our altitude which is approximately 900 feet 10 inches of water column might actually give us the input that we need out of the appliance when you purchase a propane conversion kit. In the kit you're going to get certain stickers. As you can see, this one here is to be placed onto the furnace after completion. This furnace was converted to, or on, day, month, year to propane gas. And it gives you the kit number. And you sign your name and address of the organization making the conversion, which primarily gives the installer the responsibility that it's been properly done. Also, we have a little LP sticker standing for liquid propane. I believe it will be placed onto the gas valve. Yeah, it will be placed onto the gas valve. Oops. Approximately here to signify that it has been switched over from natural gas to liquid propane. And lastly, we have a warning sticker that the valve converted for use on liquid propane gas and proper operation could result in death or serious injury and a conversion kit rating plate showing the appliance models altitudes like Darren was talking about and orifice numbers and manifold pressures. After after any conversion or servicing on any fur gas furnace appliance or whether it be a propane, natural gas or oil, you always must go through after doing any sort of work on it and check your safeties. You're going to want to go through and check your high limit. You're always going to want to ensure you are achieving the right gas pressures. If this were a natural gas installation, you would clock the gas meter. In this case, there's no proper way of, you can't clock propane. So all we can do is go by the guide and ensure we have the correct orifice size and manifold pressure. And also you're going to want to check stuff like your temperature rise, your cold air versus supply, ensuring that the furnace is doing the work that it says it's meant to do. Given that we changed the gas input, you're going to want to do a combustion analysis to ensure you're not producing CO in the house that could be potentially deadly to the residents. I'm Dave. And I'm Darren. Thanks for watching. Look forward to other videos to come.